Now, menstrual hygiene day takes place on the 28th of May every year. It's a chance to highlight the importance of menstrual care and raise awareness about the issues faced by those who don't have access to menstrual products. Now, access to menstrual products save hygienic spaces in which to use them and also the right to manage menstruation without shame or stigma is essential for anyone who menstruates. Now, the theme of our menstrual hygiene day 2024 is together for a period of friendly world. Joining us live is uh, Rabbi Musa, founder CEO of uh, uh, Mikrisa Foundation. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Good evening, Ma. Now, uh, we'll go straight to the point without wasting time. Uh, menstrual hygiene is a critical uh, issue that often goes undisclosed. And also, can you tell us a bit about uh, the current state of uh, menstrual hygiene access and also education in Nigeria? Well, the current state of um, menstrual hygiene access and education in Nigeria is very challenging. You know, we have many women and girls that lack access to affordable menstrual products. You know, they lack access to clean water and proper sanitation facilities. And additionally, education on menstrual hygiene issue is limited, which is contributing to widespread um, misinformation in local communities across Africa. And um, um, there's a stigma in many you know, communities across Nigeria and in Africa. And menstrual hygiene issue is not just um, limited to um, Nigeria, but it's a global issue that is happening even in the United States of America. And a lot of people are not talking about it. Yeah. So these are some of the challenges. Now, now, coming to challenges now, we're looking at, because uh, you, you said some of the challenges are not really assessing it now, because, you know, what is now the biggest one of it, of, of it all, of it all, you know, looking at women and what women and girls actually face when it comes to that menstrual hygiene. Now, looking at affordability, you said now, no product, uh, affordability of the product, access to clean water and the likes. And how do you now you know, tackle this? How are, we, how are our women and girls able to now, how are they supposed to tackle now, they put that way, tackle these challenges? I would say the three biggest challenges would be affordability of products, accessibility, and the lack of um, clean um, water and clean restrooms. Now, a lot of people cannot afford um, menstrual hygiene products, especially in rural areas and even in cities. They are very expensive, you know, with the economic hardship right now in Nigeria and in the world with everything that is happening. When you go to communities, you find that um, girls have resorted to, you know, using racks, tissue paper, and so many other methods that they use. Just recently, I was at a community and, you know, I was engaging some young women in that community. And one of the girls said that um, a particular man who is always, um, you know, assisting her to buy menstrual products when she's on her period, even put her on a family way. So these are very serious issues that i think the government needs to step up their game you know when it comes to making this product very accessible they have to make it really accessible for women and girls in rural communities or even make it um non-taxable you know yeah okay now uh, uh, look, let's go to towards the education part you know, you know we have the accessible part uh, the well-being you know education now how does this now affect uh, women and girls in terms of education? Well, in terms of education, it affects women a lot because you find out that if a woman is, or, or if a girl is on her period, especially for those who cannot afford it in rural areas, okay. they won't even be able to go to school because they use racks, you know. So how can you now um, explain that, like, going to school is an issue and so they miss out on potential opportunities. They can't thrive enough and this is a subject that needs to be discussed we there's a lot of um we need to create more awareness on the issue of menstrual poverty we need to see how um, we can make this product very accessible so that girls can access this product and then that way they're able to go to school without having any issues just recently we started running a sanitary bath bank, um, a sanitary uh, pad bank in some schools in Jama'a local government of um, Kaduna State, 
where we give um this products free of charge to all the girls that are in the school so anytime a girl is in school and she sees her period she doesn't have to you know take an excuse or even leave the school you know she can have she can easily go to her principal and get this um product free of charge so these are some of the things we're doing you know to alleviate this um issue of menstrual poverty so we need to make um the government need to make the products very accessible so that these girls can have access to this product and that way it will hinder them from you know going to school and a lot of things they're doing okay i believe now you just mentioned some of the solutions and innovations that uh, we need or we are using to uh, to combat this uh, challenge now now looking at the stigma now seated with you know surrounding menstruation and uh, how, how do you how do we break this stigma you know, and create a more open conversation about this natural bodily function. Because some we say they are a bit embarrassed about it. Oh, they can't, they don't want to hear about it, they don't want to know what it is. But no, how do we break the stigma? So the only way we can break the stigma is through education and awareness. You know, just what we are doing and what a lot of civil society organizations are doing. Even though I, I, I honestly find that um the issue um concerning Mr. I hygiene and menstrual education generally i don't think people are really talking about it the conversation i think it's not enough people need to start talking we need to be intentional you know and how do we become intentional is by you know going to schools going to communities creating awareness telling people that menstrual hygiene is a normal fact of life the fact that a woman is menstruating i mean it's it's something that people should get used to you know, because you find that in a lot of communities in Africa, the fact that you're on your period, even some men will tell you they can't even eat from your pot because you're menstruating. You know, these things are still happening in a lot of communities in Africa. So we need to educate our men, just like we're doing even at my Crystal Foundation, you know, we're educated, we're trying to raise um, male champions, you know, young boys talking about menstruation. They don't need to embarrass their... Um, schoolmates when they're menstruating or when they stain themselves in school you know those kind of conversations even in community meetings and in general meetings in communities we need to talk to elders we need to you know advocate for policies we need to also talk to community leaders about menstruation let them understand what the kind of challenges women are facing when they're menstruating so education is key and you know awareness yeah thank you miss rabbi now i'm going to ask one final question now which is Two questions in one, let me put it that way. Uh, now, what are your hopes for the future of menstrual hygiene management? And also, how do you think viewers can also get involved in, uh, in the supporting uh, organizations that are working to address this issue? I would say for us, you know, I, um, uh, I we hope for a future, you know, where every girl in Nigeria has access to affordable products. You know, I want a situation whereby girls between the ages of 12 to 16 in high school have access to this product you know freely you know government should step up their game government should be able to make this products readily available i mean condoms are free a lot of times you go to places they have you, you see condoms everywhere they're placed in hotels they're placed in um, public places so why not sanitary parts which to me is even more important so i i, I am hoping to see um a future where girls have access to sanitary products and the only way girls can have access to sanitary products is when we make intentional policies to make these products very very accessible also um viewers you know can support organizations that are um, already talking about menstrual health and hygiene you know menstrual poverty is a very serious issue like i said it's not just um, an issue that we're faced, in, faced with in Nigeria. It's a global issue. And so we need to step up our game. We need to start talking about it. We need to start, start having conversations. And then stakeholders need to, you know, donate these products free of charge to people that really need it, to organizations that are, you know, talking about um, menstrual hygiene. They can also support, you know, ad by advocating for policies, you know, that support menstrual health and hygiene. We can also, you know, um, donate sanitary pads and, you know, some kind of supplies for women and girls in rural areas. Thank you very much. I believe uh, I kind of learned a lot, actually. I believe maybe when I, maybe the nearest future, when I end up having a, a daughter, I can uh, believe I can sit down, uh, sit her down and start uh, teaching her one or two things about uh, menstruation so that she doesn't, uh, you know, go around and, you know, feeling uh, scared. Like, oh, I just found something. I don't know what it is. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Rabi. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, we thank just had... 
Um, no, very nice and uh, a trigger in a conversation and an interview with uh, Ms. Ravi and say a very big thank you, uh, Ms. Ravi Musa, who is the CEO and founder of uh, Mikrisa Foundation, who is speaking to us on that uh, note, the menstrual, uh, menstrual Day, World Menstrual Day. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you so much.